Um, just want to begin with, uh, when you came out and made the announcement, uh, you said three words. I was wondering if you could repeat them for us and tell us why you chose them. I'm afraid my Parsi is not good enough to repeat <laughs> them by memory. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I said in Farsi, and I practiced intensely yesterday, um, woman, life, freedom. And it is the adopted slogan of the protest movement in Iran that was a spontaneous reaction to the young girl, Amini, who was um, killed while she was held in custody by Iranian morality police. And as we all recall, this sort of lit a spark in Iran that mobilized hundreds of thousands of people who uh, actually adopted this slogan. And in Farsi, it has a sort of very nice rhythm. So it's very useful to use in demonstrations, I imagine. Yes, uh, sorry to put you on the spot there with the, the Farsi. Uh, you, you rightly recognize those protesters. And then you also pointed out that Mohammadi's uh, protest has been going on uh, for decades. Um, but the question is, and why Nargis and why now? Several reasons. Uh, first of all, she is a long time uh, as an Iranian activist, and she has achieved a position as an undisputed leader, as a woman's activist, a human rights activist, and demanding basic democratic rights to and human rights to, to people in Iran. And I think also uh, she showed her genius when even imprisoned in the Evin prison, she took a role of leadership in these new demonstrations that were started off last year. And she simply is the leading figure among many very important activists and leaders that have taken a role in this movement in Iran. Uh, Barrett, your sentiments echoed by her brother who responded after she was awarded the prize. I'd like you to listen to what he had to say. Uh, Nargis has been concerned with human rights, not just as a concept. She has been on the ground with people in Iran. The regime in Iran has tried to silence her, but they have not succeeded. This award gives Nargis a greater opportunity to focus on human rights. It is a signal to the regime that they see what they are doing. It's a signal to the regime that they see what they are doing. Is there any concern that this might expose Nargis uh, uh, to the um, Iranian authorities, that they might put uh, more pressure on her? Or instead, could this protect her? This you never know. Uh, there is, of course, reason for a concern. But I would say our general um, um, experience of, of several peace prizes and speaking to so many laureates, they often say, the Peace Prize has protected me, but not always. Um, and of course, we consider this aspect, but a person like Nargis Mohammadi, she has already made the choice for herself. She is willing to make the largest sacrifices to be able to stand up and fight for what she believes in. Uh, this marked, by our count, the third time the award was given to someone who's serving uh, jail time in recent years. Uh, in your speech, you mentioned social justice. Does this seem to be a sort of emerging trend that many of the people who are uh, being given the Nobel Peace Prize are sadly activists that are behind bars? No, that is no qualification in itself. Uh, being behind bars shows two things that the um, laureate is uh, working in a, uh, operating in a state that is using very repressive methods, methods. As for Nargis Mohammadi 
as for Alas Bialyatsky, as for Liu Chabo, but there, it is their work we recognize that is important. And it also illustrates that standing up for, as a freedom fighter and a fighter for human rights can sometimes be dangerous and it has a cost. Uh, I was wondering if you could explain to us a little bit about the selection process. Over 300 people were nominated for the prize. How does a committee choose? Well, we get a list of nominees and we are bound by the nominees. We can nominate ourselves, but only in the first meeting that we usually hold in February or March at the beginning of the year. And then it is basically an elimination process. You know, in the first meetings, there's quite a few that we perhaps discuss and find that has no interest for the time being. Um, but during the process, when we look at candidates that interest us, either because of the individual qualifications, the causes they represent, the geographical areas that we would like to uh, put some attention to, it can be a combination of many considerations. But we do um, get assistance by consultants and we take advice and, and receive papers from prominent experts and scholars on the different issues that we um, are digging into. A, a lot of controversy about uh, past choices. I want to put that aside. I also want to put Nargis Mahmoudi aside. I don't know if you can answer this, Barrett, but I want to ask you, do you have any personal favorites, uh, Nobel laureates, from the past that you could single out as particularly speaking to you as an individual? Well, my position forbids me to have a favorite. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> I really can't. I, I, I really can't uh, right. answer that. But I can uh, say something that made a very deep impression on me. Uh, all the laureates, I've, this has been such a wonderful part of this job, is, of course, meeting these incredible, outstanding, extraordinary people. But we were very concerned when we um, gave the prize to Malala Yousafzai, would she be mature enough to carry the prize? And I have to say, in during this award ceremony in the city hall of Oslo, when Malala gave her famous speech of one child, one pen, it's the most powerful speech I have heard. 